Once again, if you're, I see that there are more than 20 of you, so if you feel like introducing yourself in the chat, uh, please do. Uh, would be good also to know where you're from, because today's topic is all about the uh, ecosystem. So if you can if you can share where you're from in the chat, that would be nice just to get a little bit of a feeling about which ecosystem are you currently at. Um, yeah, so I think we can uh, start. So just a second. I will say that uh, during the presentation, feel free. Ah, okay, I'm sorry, the chat is disabled. Our mistake, just a second. Thank you for the QA message. <laughs> so just a minute. Uh, see how can we release the chat. I think the chat is now released, so feel free to <laughs> introduce yourself. And once again, our apologies uh, for that. Uh, great, best work, Chris. So you can you can go for it. Uh, great. So we have Talat here from Berlin. Uh, so it's great, great ecosystem, by the way. Almost one of the top ten in the world, Chris. I'm guessing you're from Saloniki, or this is thanks. Uh, Warsaw. Warsaw is also a great ecosystem in East Europe. Spain, that's great. Where in Spain, Javier? We have also Budapest, an ecosystem that had a lot of potential to become one of the biggest in the world, but unfortunately, not that, uh, not, not that uh, didn't really make it. Uh, Ali from Jordan, uh, Alan Fik Ali. Uh, Aman is, is, a, is a very nice ecosystem that has, we've been witnessing its growth recently. Uh, Seoul, so that's great. We have uh, Seoul, uh, that's a massive ecosystem in Asia. That's great. Chris from the USA. Where exactly in the USA, Chris? Uh, that's the most important thing. When we talk about ecosystems, by the way, the city is much more important than the, than the country, uh, which is pretty interesting in a way. Uh, we have Theodores from Riga, which is uh, which is also one of the top ecosystems in the Baltics. Although the Baltics are very small, but both Riga, uh, Tallinn, and uh, and Vilnius are great ecosystems. So that's great to uh, that's great to connect. Super. So uh, really nice to see the variety of uh, of uh, of places. I see that we have Satoshi from Kigali from Rwanda, also very cool ecosystem in East Africa. Uh, Javier, are you from Pamplona and Malaga? Malaga is a more vibrant ecosystem. We have some good friends there. Uh, North Macedonia, Dallas, Dubai, really cool. Uh, Athens, Turkey, that's awesome. So some of you are actually in very high quality ecosystems already. So congratulations on that. I'm gonna share my screen with you and uh, we'll figure out a little bit uh, a way to uh, help you uh, make some decisions about your ecosystem and so on. Uh, during this presentation, feel free to use the Q&A button to, um, to ask any question. This should be as interactive as possible. I'll try to answer as many questions uh, as possible. Um, so yeah, let me just share my screen and we'll get started. So uh, generally, uh, this is a this is a, this is a talk about uh, the best cities uh, to relocate your uh, your startup your startup in twenty twenty three. And let's talk a little bit about. Uh, we'll do a quick introduction. First of all, I don't know if you know Startup Link, but basically, Startup Link is a global startup ecosystem map and a research center. Um, it basically uh, is an interactive map of startups. I recommend to check it out. It's uh, most of the activities there are for free. Uh, it would allow you to kind of see where are the startups located, what are they doing and so on. Other than that, also Startup Link is ranking the startup ecosystems of 1000 uh, cities, 100 countries. We work together with uh, more than 100 governments uh, also with uh, with a few global data partners like Crunchbase, SEMrush, Statista and so on. That's something that we really enjoy doing. So let's talk a little bit about why your startup ecosystem matters. You know, I don't know if any of you know uh, Naval Ravikant, who is a, a, a 
one of one of the people I, I really like to follow is a he's sort of a philosopher. He's also the uh, the founder of Angelist. And uh, Naval is saying that there are only three big decisions that we have to uh, um, do in life. The first one is what are we working on? The second one is who are we with? Usually our partner, uh, our, uh, our, our husband, wife, or, or whatever. And the third one is where we are. Now, in terms of, uh, of startups, I have to tell you that uh, most of the entrepreneurs are not thinking about the question of where they are. They would spend a lot of time to think about what they're working on. They would obsess about what they're working on. They would also spend a lot of time uh, thinking about co-founders and so on, who are they working with. They would not spend enough time on, on am I in the right place? And uh, the idea is that actually being in the right place would have massive implications on your success. Um, both unicorns, which are startups at above $1 billion valuation, and successful bootstrap startups are very condensely located in a few cities. There are, one, there are 10, 000, more than 10,000 cities in the world. Most of the unicorns, more than 50% of the unicorns are in the top five cities. Now, those top five cities do not have superhumans in them. Uh, not at all. The average intelligence in those cities would be the average intelligence all over the world, which makes you wonder, why are startups much more successful there? And the answer is that those cities are simply, by being in those cities, you are getting closer to success by default. Um, there is a reason why so many of our startup champions, like uh, Elon Musk and Zuckerberg and so on, a, a lot of them are in San Francisco. Like, so that, that just simply by being in the right place can make you a star. Um, when you, if you would stay in your uh, original city, you would almost be a nobody. So in a way, the city can build you, can build your startup. I know it's counterintuitive because we always think, look, if I'm doing a good enough work and if I have good enough co-founders, I'm going to be okay. It's not the case. Apparently, the place where you are allows sort of a flywheel that helps you greatly grow much faster. That's that's uh, that's something that is a little bit counterintuitive, and that's why we think that people are not spending enough time thinking about it. The conclusion is that depending on your goals and your ambitions, if you are in an underperforming ecosystem, and if you want to ask, if you want to know if you're an underperforming ecosystem or not, uh, it's very hard to answer this question. It's just like product market fit. Uh, do I have a good enough product market fit, yes or no? Uh, it's also a very difficult question to answer. But when you ask people about, about that, if they do or they don't, they usually tell you when they do, you know that you do. So if you're in a great ecosystem, you know that you're in a great ecosystem. And if you're sort of unsure, there's a very good sign that you're not. Unfortunately, Startup Link came to your help with those rankings that we do of 1,000 cities. So now officially, you have no excuses about guessing. You can go to startuplink.com. There are ranking tables that are available for free for everyone. Uh, and you can check the ranking tables and figure out where are you exactly and what are your uh, options. So that's a little bit about that. Okay, let me see if we have any questions. So Bernard is asking in the QA about uh, London. London is very, we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper into, into specific cities later on, but uh, London is very interesting, by the way, because as you can see here, London is the only city in the top five um, that is not a US, US city. So if you, for some reason, want to avoid the US and still be in a super global successful city, London is probably your only real ecosystem to go to. There is simply nothing else outside of the US. If you're really aiming for the the cream of the creme, like uh, creme de la creme, uh, London is one of them. So Bernard is asking, uh, London is very attractive for fundraising due to tax advantages for investors. Are there any other cities in Europe which offer attractive investment incentives for investors uh, like London? Um, 
generally not, but not the incentives. Europe is very slow. You can see over here, uh, Bernard, that uh, uh, the, the city that follows London in Europe would be both Paris, Tel Aviv, if you can kind of consider uh, Tel Aviv as, a, as a, something in the vicinity of Europe. But you would also see over here that London has almost two times more, much more than two times the, the score of, uh, of Paris. The gaps are very, very big. Europe is generally not as successful. Now, I would actually challenge your assumption that uh, London is successful because of the, 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 there is a lot of investment because of incentives. Investors follow money. They follow success. So by them seeing that in London, uh, there are almost three times more high quality startups than in Paris, and the success rate is three times higher, or the, the output is three times higher, they would go there even if the taxes would have been higher in London, unrelated to taxes. So uh, unfortunately, the, the, the government can go only a certain distance to encourage people to arrive to the next system, but actually it's all about the success. And if there is success, the government can put no entry signs all over the X system and they would still arrive. So the reason why people are uh, focusing on London is simply because it has a lot more unicorns and a lot more success stories, even more than the incentives, which are helpful, without a doubt. But uh, it's not only that. Uh, Europe has not managed to create any other, um, any other big success stories other than London. Unfortunately, we see very, very good signs recently, by the way, from Paris. We'll talk a little bit about this when we uh, when we're talking about the um, about the European ecosystems, because we have a slide about that. We have an anonymous attendee asking about any recommendations with the best VCs to work on. It really depends on your stage. If you're in a stage that you're still pre-VC, well, probably one of your best moves to do would be to go to uh, the only accelerator that is really worth its salt in the world, Y Combinator. So that would be a no-brainer move. And whoever is in a position to scale and so on that uh, that can go to Y Combinator, please do. That's probably the, the smartest thing that you can do. All the other accelerators are paling in comparison, uh, almost non-existent, minus corporate accelerators, which are usually good, but Y Combinator is like 20 leagues above everyone else. Um, and as for the VCs, yeah, uh, just just check. You can you do, can do a Google search about the VCs that are the most successful or have the most money or most valuable LPs and so on. Uh, what comes to mind, of course, and recent orbits, Sequoia, those two are uh, uh, the benchmark. You have many many others, and recent orbits and Sequoia are probably that if I have to pick only two, I would say those two. Uh, by the way, there is a reason they're they're not in most ecosystems. I think Andreessen Horowitz will soon open or just open something in London. But until now, if you'd be in London, they would they, you would be off the radar. Uh, the, the question you, that the anonymous uh, attendee should have probably ask is where are uh, all those great VCs to work with? Uh, if you want to cover all of them, they're they're all in San Francisco. Not even one of them dared not to be in San Francisco. So, uh, so yeah, like, uh, and probably uh, some of them are in New York, as you can see here, some of them in London, in Los Angeles, in Boston. And as you go down the list, you would see that they have zero presence in other places. So that's, that's kind of like important to uh, prepare, uh, prepare ourselves from. Um, cool. Yeah, uh, so basically Chris is asking a little bit about the, uh, the rise of the rest. Definitely there is a rise of the rest. Uh, the ecosystems in the past, it would have been San Francisco and all the rest. Actually, according to our studies in 2019, San Francisco was five times higher than any other city on the total score. So imagine if there are 546, in 2019, New York would be at around 100, 120. Since then, there's been a massive value destruction in San Francisco, created by San Francisco itself. And then, by the way, empires are really enjoying to commit a suicide. So it's not that. Uh, so unfortunately, it's a, it's a process that uh, that happens naturally all across history. Uh, but definitely the gaps have been decreasing from San Francisco, from everyone else. However, I have to say also that according to our research this year, 
is the first year since 2019 where the massive value destruction actually stopped. Probably this is because of the big down, downfall of, uh, of startup funding and so on. So a lot of the ecosystems that are young and were very, very vibrant and felt like they're the new up and, up and comers are now shutting down because uh, many of the investors are saying, okay, I have to focus only on a few things. I was very bullish before and now I have to be more defensive. If you're more defensive, you're going to come back to the origins and that's probably San Francisco and a few other cities and you're going to reduce your presence in whatever is not your core place. And, uh, and that's why San Francisco, for the first time since 2019, does not really experience a massive value destruction. And I'm really, really interested to see what's going to be the total score gap next year. Uh, but it seems like the, the downfall is not necessarily bad for San Francisco right now. So yeah. Uh, Prague, you're asking about Prague. Uh, let me, they're not in the top uh, European cities. They have been slowish. Um, not exciting. They had a good run with antiviruses uh, uh, applications and so on, but they're they are not really pushing forward. Uh, in in Europe, once again, the only one that is really pushing forward lately is Paris, and I would also mention Stockholm. The others are a little bit disappointing, and we didn't really have the only ecosystem in East Europe, by the way, that was stellar was Kiev before the war. Uh, that was the only one that was growing incredibly fast and we had very high hopes for, but of course now there are ma massive challenges. Cool. Let's talk a little bit about why should you relocate. So again, why why is it that that uh, not only the more than 50% of the unicorns are in only five cities, but also at the same time, um, the bootstrap startups that are extremely successful like MailChimp and so on. You know, MailChimp was recently sold for $14 billion. They didn't get any investors in the beginning. Uh, Basecamp and so on. You have a lot of examples of startups that uh, basically uh, managed to grow substantially and become massive monsters, even without a lot of funding. But I will tell you this, those startups were based also in the top cities, many of them in San Francisco. So it's pretty interesting to see that uh, you can't really, uh, uh, even if you don't want investors, it's really important to be in the right place. So let's talk about why, why, why what's so interesting about those cities. Again, the, the, the average intelligence of those cities is the same, like in all the other cities. Why is it that if you're there or whoever is there has much, much higher chance of becoming something much more substantial? So first of all, what happens in those cities is that uh, basically there is a network effect. Uh, there are many people, uh, extremely talented people. Your chances of finding co-founders, team members, and so on are much higher, and their quality is going to be much, much higher than if you would stay in an underperforming ecosystem. So um, that, that's kind of like the, the idea over here. Just by simply changing your location, you're changing your chances of success. And, you know, when when I'm speaking with 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 founders, and I'm asking them, hey, can you can you give me the the moment or a few a few key moments that made your startup as successful as it is, then surprisingly, um, they tell you that the moments that made the most difference are usually random moments. By random, I mean a chance encounter with someone that said, hey, let's do a joint venture or a chance encounter with a great co-founder that changed totally the future of the company and so on. So your uh, possibility of having those chance encounters in cities that are extremely successful is much higher than in cities that are not. And the, the, the sad thing over here is that if you're missing out and you're not in one of those ecosystems, you would not even pay attention to it because those are just like gifts that arrive randomly, but we don't suffer from the lack of them. They just arrive out of nowhere and you're like, wow, what? I was so lucky. But you weren't, usually you weren't lucky. You were just in the right place at the right time. And to be in the right place in the right time, you have to be in the right city. So that's, that's about that. And we're talking about finding the co-founders, finding team members, finding suppliers, finding clients. Uh, of course, investors. Investors usually focus on very, very few uh, ecosystems, they really like their uh, uh, startups to be close to them. So uh, mainly for investment, you have to be in the great ecosystems, but also for something else. Look, when someone is going 
to San Francisco or New York or London, and they're, let's say, in Istanbul or uh, uh, in Seoul and so on, they make a declaration. They make a declaration that they want to be big. And those are the people you also want in your team, in a way. Um, so, so there is a reason. So that, that's why we're trying to change the mindset of people to understand that you do have to think a lot about if you're in the right place. And that's, that's really important. So, cool. Other than that, the, the right place would also give you uh, emotional support. Look, uh, be, building a startup is extremely difficult. If you're in a place that is relatively isolated where most people have nine to five jobs, you would doubt yourself constantly, especially in the low moments. Uh, especially if you're staying close to your family and friends that would also push you into having those, those jobs and to kind of have a more normal lifestyle. But if you're in a place like San Francisco or, or London and so on, building a startup and, and failing a startup, it's something that is very natural. It's sort of like everyone is cheering for each other and you get a lot of inspiration from each other. It's really important. You're also gonna be in places where you have cutting edge knowledge and many, many communities and events if you're in a place like uh, London or Tel Aviv or San Francisco, you're going to have two meetups that you can go to. There's going to be so many options for an Amazon meetup and a, a, an AI meetup and so on, including food, by the way. That's, that's how most people have their, their dinner and lunch in Tel Aviv or in San Francisco, just going to, to the meetups and have pizzas there. Uh, and when you're in an ecosystem that there is one event once a week or once a month, it shows, it's slow. The, the, the connection, the information is not flowing fast enough. So that's kind of like something that uh, that really should be taken into account. Okay, let's have a look if we have any uh, questions just before we continue. Um, yeah, we have quite a few. Yeah. So Chris is stunned by, by Prague not being that amazing. After, Prague is a great city. It's a great city to live in. It's a great, great quality of life, great, great cost of living and so on. It's not a great startup city, unfortunately. Yeah, it will be probably one day, but it's not happening just yet. Maybe it's too relaxed for its own good. Um, in what terms Berlin is behind London? Talat is asking in all terms. Absolutely in all terms in the number of startup investment, in the number of unicorns, in the number of employees, in absolutely everything. Berlin has a little bit of a problem of being a fluffy ecosystem. The, by the way, Munich in, in some cases is growing, growing relatively fast. Berlin is a better ecosystem than Munich, but if you really want to do something interesting with P2P and hardware, you would probably be in Munich. Mm -hmm. uh, Berlin is a great ecosystem. It is one of the best in the world. It's, I think it's number 11 in the world. It's a great ecosystem. You're lucky to be in Berlin, 100%, but you can compare it to London. London is simply much, much better. You, you, you want to know the difference between uh, London and Berlin? Uh, it's basically the difference between Revolut and N26. It's a big difference. N26 is an amazing fintech company. Revolut is 20 times bigger. And uh, those are the two poster childs of the X system. So you can kind of figure out from this that the scales are simply different. So yeah. Uh, Chris is asking, which European city would you start an accelerator? That's a great question. And I'm not sure about this. It really depends. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily start an accelerator in a great startup ecosystem because you, you want to help people. And in great startup ecosystem, they probably don't need your help that, that much. So uh, I have to think about this. We'll get back to you about this. Uh, Krishna is saying that his startup is in Bangalore and he wants a setup in a Europe city that is good, a European city is good, he's done grants. If you want a no-brainer answer, it's London. Once again, nothing beats London. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely go for London. Way. Uh, why is Dubai not part of the list of the top cities? Nora is asking. Dubai is a great startup ecosystem. It's advancing very, very fast. It's also the second best startup ecosystem in the Middle East it still does not have enough unicorns um, and the investment to reach the, to, to the top. Uh, you know, you have Kareem and other, other applications, but it still has not managed to create startups that have uh, grown globally. So Kareem, for example, is very good in the Middle East, but, but still we've not seen global innovation from Dubai just yet. I think it's gonna happen relatively soon. Uh, there are also other issues in Dubai with, for example, that the local population, because of the relative wealth that there is, 
in Dubai, usually the most important asset of an ecosystem is the local population. And unfortunately in Dubai, the local population is not that incentivized to take risk because life is relatively good. Uh, so it means that Dubai really relies on foreigners in order to make it big. And that's, uh, that's something that uh, is important. Javier, yes, we're gonna send the, uh, the slides of the presentation. Um, uh, yeah, and Dina, Dina, I totally agree that uh, Dubai is a great ecosystem and also amazing tax benefits. Unfortunately for startups, by the way, uh, tax, taxes are not relevant at all because, uh, because basically uh, uh, all startups are losing money at the beginning. So that's, that's, uh, that's the reason why it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's move on to get back to our presentation. Feel free to keep on uh, asking questions. They're more interesting than our presentation, 100%. So basically, how do you uh, do, uh, think about, first of all, how, how do you know if you need to relocate? So first of all, the intuitive answer is that you just know. If you're in the wrong place and it's kind of like meh, then you want to go somewhere else. There is no doubt about it because it's not going to be meh in San Francisco and London. Okay, so that's the that's the idea. Uh, then again, check how your startup ecosystem is performing. Once again, Startup Link gives you a list for free of 1,000 cities ranked according to order. Uh, take this into account. You also want to take into account your vertical, which means that not only your ranking, but uh, is, is important of the city, but also how does it perform in specific verticals? For example, uh, London is extremely good in FinTech. You know, uh, Boston, for example, not ranked in the top three globally, but they're absolutely excellent in health tech and so on. So you have to take this into account as well. One of the things to consider is are you looking for co-founders of high quality? And especially, are you looking for investors? Because if you're looking for investors and you're building a startup and you know that you need million dollars of, millions of dollars of investment, especially nowadays when there is an economic downturn, you want to be in one of the top ecosystems. So that's, uh, that's something that is very, very uh, important. One more thing is also to figure out, do you want to create innovation globally, create a global startup or a regional startup? Because for example, if you are focused regionally, let's say on the Middle East, and you're saying, look, I wanna create something that is gonna be the best application of X in the Middle East, you're much better off going to Dubai than San Francisco. Because Dubai has become the center of Middle Eastern innovation. Uh, the same goes by the way to Singapore. If you're focused on Asia, uh, Singapore is the place to be, not, not, not anywhere else. But if you're looking to create something much, much bigger than San Francisco and London, on a global level, then San Francisco and London make, and New York and so on, make a lot more, uh, a lot more sense. And so that's, that's basically, but the bottom line is that not everyone has to be in San Francisco. Yes, it's the best ecosystem in the world without a doubt, but it's also extremely expensive, very difficult. Government is anti-startups. Uh, many, many things there don't make a lot of sense. So San Francisco is a place to go only if you're trying to change the world, only if you want to create the next Facebook. But it all, you have to align it with your goals and so on. So that's, that's really, really important. Um, as for, um, as for the, the so, so again, it's really important also for you to understand what are your plans? What are your ambitions? You need to have a discussion with yourself about what are your plans and ambitions even before you, you decide on the location. Because once you know your plans and ambitions, then you know which place is right for you. And of course, there is personal preferences. You know, life is short. We don't want to suffer. So if, if you totally spend some time in the US and you don't really enjoy it, then London, even though it's a little bit not as good, or Berlin or Paris and so on. So that's, that's kind of like something to think about. Uh, and of course, uh, on quality of life, if you go to a place like San Francisco, you will not have good quality of life. You'll probably be sleeping in a dorm with 10 other people. Um, while if you're staying in a place like Chiang Mai or Bali and so on, you would live a life of luxury on exactly the same budget. So uh, again, it really has to do with, with your budget, your ambition, what exactly are you trying to do, on which geography are you trying to, to expand to, uh, and so on. So that's, uh, that's something to take uh, really into account. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the startup ecosystems, like just give you a review about the startup ex top startup ecosystems and so on. Um, uh, now, it's important to say some startup ecosystems, just like we said, have a very unique geographic focus that is um, that is basically, you have to take it into account. Like, even though uh, 
uh, let's start with the global startup ecosystem. I'll give you an example over there. So those are the top 10 currently in the world. As you can see over here, you can also see the total score and then you can see the difference between everyone. San Francisco is much, much better than, almost two and a half times better than New York. So it's not like a small gap that they won by uh, whatever. San Francisco is still the queen of ecosystems. New York is also, you can see over here from the total score, it's absolutely an outstanding ecosystem. It's a, a league of its own. After San Francisco, nobody gets even close to New York. And then you have a batch of free ecosystems, uh, London, Los Angeles, and Boston that are relative close to each other. Uh, Los Angeles is very good in entertainment, things like Snap and stuff like that. Boston is very good in health tech. Uh, London is very good in FinTech. So those are the top five ecosystems. Once again, four out of four out of five are in the USA. The USA is simply the best startup country in the world by far. Uh, London is doing great as well. Uh, and then you have a few interest. So those five ecosystems, especially if they connect with your vertical, San Francisco is all the verticals. Doesn't matter what you do, San Francisco is always going to be best in almost everything. New York is mainly fintech. So if you're doing fintech globally, you would go to New York. If you don't want to go to New York, you would go to London, especially on fintech as well. And then Los Angeles and Boston. The other ecosystems in terms of output of innovation in are Beijing and Shanghai, but it doesn't mean that you have to go to Beijing and Shanghai. Those are very national ecosystems. They have more than 1 billion people, so they can do amazing things. But if you're in Beijing, Shanghai, or Bangalore, the, the free ecosystems that follow Boston, you're innovating for China or India, and that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the idea. So although they have, they're massively successful, they're massively successful because they innovate nationally for a population of over 1 billion people, but you definitely don't want to go there if you're thinking about doing something regional or global. Then you have Paris, uh, once again, a very strong ecosystem in Europe and a lot of hopes that it, it would become even bigger, and uh, Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is also not necessarily a place to go to, it's usually Israeli entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, the government is not, not that sophisticated, let's say. Uh, they're very lucky that they have great entrepreneurs in the country, but it's not a place where that attracts foreign talent at all. Uh, Paris is also not uh, one of those places. Paris is usually for French entrepreneurs. Uh, so if you would ask me, if you're aiming big, really, really big, and you want a global ecosystem, it's one of the top five. Uh, that's it. All the, uh, the ones from six to 10 are either irre irrelevant for you or not so friendly in a way for global innovation. So that's, uh, that's important to say. Uh, let me just see if we have any other questions. Uh, hey, Roderick, nice to see you as well. Uh, so, great. Uh, Theodors is asking, what growth perspectives do you see in ecosystems in overlooked market of Europe, Central Eastern Europe, and the Baltics? I think the perspectives are very good. Tallinn has always been a very impressive ecosystem. We're gonna see it in the chart of Europe and uh, they're very good in promotion. Uh, where you are from, uh, Riga, unfortunately, very sleepy compared to Tallinn and Vilnius. Um, the government has not woken up yet. I think they're starting to wake up now, but it's a little bit too late. Those two, Tallinn started very, very early. Vilnius joined relatively early and now Riga is trying to join, it's hard. To, to be the third. But uh, generally, um, I don't really believe in the concept of overlooked markets. When there are markets that are producing a lot of unicorns, they're no longer overlooked. So it's all up to the ecosystems to sort of uh, uh, show that they can actually give the result and the ROI for the investors. Uh, but the region of the Baltic is very, very interesting, especially, especially uh, uh, Tallinn and Vilnius, and hopefully Riga soon, but not yet. Um, Chris is asking, do French labor laws make it essentially impossible to fire anybody? Uh, France has been very, very good in shooting itself in the foot. It has great entrepreneurs. It really reminds me of Israel. Great entrepreneurs and uh, a government that just sometimes does more damage than good. Unfortunately for France, what happened in the recent years is that Macron is extremely pro-market and he's trying to change things. It's slow, it's very, very painful. It will take a lot of strikes, but he's actually doing an extremely good job and they have massive budgets to do it. Uh, it shows. So, uh, so I'm, I'm sort of optimistic. They've started from a position that it was 
incredibly difficult to become an entrepreneur in France because just like you said, very difficult to fire people and so on. And now it's getting better and better. So uh, that's, uh, that's the idea. Um, yeah, Tordos is talking about Tallinn and, and definitely Tallinn benefited a lot from Skype. By the way, Skype is not necessarily an Estonian startup. It's actually a Swedish startup, but the, but the guys in Tallinn are very good in promoting themselves. So they, they, they are masters of promotion and they managed to basically build a narrative that actually caught up with reality uh, as well. Uh, so that's uh, that's really good. And I'm glad to hear that you have a unicorn in Riga. I didn't know that, so that's awesome. Great. Uh, North America, for those of you who are interested in, in America, we talked about San Francisco, we talked about New York, Los Angeles, and Boston. And then you see a big, big drop in the total score, but some very interesting ecosystems as well. Seattle, Chicago, Washington, Austin, Texas, uh, San Diego, and a Canadian city as well, Toronto, which is by far the best ecosystem in Canada. So those are those are your top picks if you're going for uh, North America. Europe, um, yeah, so we, we had a few questions about Europe. So once again, London by far the best. You can see the massive uh, change in the total score, two and a half times more than anything else. You then have Paris and Berlin. Uh, Paris is really picking up. So uh, very bullish about it. Stockholm is also picking up extremely fast. You can see it jumped in the global score four spots. It's very, uh, Stockholm should actually write that they have Skype. Uh, they also have Klarna and Spotify, of course. Uh, honestly, St uh, Stockholm is the only city in Europe that managed to produce a real startup champion, which is Spotify. There was no nothing of sorts in any other city, minus the one in Amsterdam, which managed to create uh, one of the biggest, most important chip manufacturing companies, uh, ASMR, uh, valued, if I'm not mistaken, 200 billion euros. They're not a startup, they're 50 years old, but that's probably the most important uh, company in Europe that nobody is noticing. Uh, then you have Moscow. Moscow, of course, had a lot of potential, could have been extremely, could have been a top uh, by, by London. Unfortunately, government policy just, uh, just created a situation that, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Vitalik from Ethereum is from Russia. Uh, the founders of Revolut that we talked about, Russia. The founders of Telegram that are now in Dubai, Russians. Uh, so it just shows you that the, you can have the most amazing people, but if the government policy is making it difficult for entrepreneurs to thrive, then you're going to get slapped. Moscow, by the way, has population more than anyone in, in Europe. And, uh, it's just a pity. Munich, by the way, is growing very, very fast. We talked about Munich. I have very high hopes for Munich to become a startup hub in Europe. Barcelona has always been strong. And surprisingly, it's even better than Madrid. Uh, and then Helsinki as well. Helsinki is a gaming. Uh, and you can see also the momentum in Helsinki, plus five. Uh, the strongest jump together with Munich is Helsinki. So uh, those, are, those are the ecosystems that are interesting. I guess, uh, uh, in uh, in Europe. Uh, cool. Yeah, Chris, you're right. Also, uh, Google founder is from Russia. So uh, it just, uh, just shows you the massive potential and what was lost when, uh, when you don't play your cards right. So as for the top 10 in the Asia Pacific, Beijing and Shanghai, once again, every, everyone that you see here from the Chinese list, Massive potential, massive output only for China. China is isolated from the world. So if you go there and don't go there because it's basically only Chinese entrepreneurs, uh, uh, it's basically only for China. Same goes for Bangalore and New Delhi. Uh, they're focused on the Indian market. So you don't go there to innovate globally. The first one you would go maybe to innovate globally is maybe Tokyo. Tokyo is having enjoying very good momentum. The biggest VC in the world, by the way, SoftBank is there. Um, and they're doing amazing work. So Tokyo is extremely interesting. And the one that I really like is Singapore, a, just a small, small country that became basically the place to headquarter your company, especially after Hong Kong. Nobody, no, not a lot of people want to go to Hong Kong anymore. It used to be the gate of Asia, not anymore. Singapore is now the gate of Asia. A, so a very interesting ecosystem, but still not managing to innovate globally. Very national ecosystem, unfortunately. Uh, so it's, it's just 
they have a lot of potential, but we, but the problem is that their entrepreneurs are preferring to innovate locally and that creates, uh, they, they don't fulfill their potential just yet. Uh, although they're in the top 25, and then you have Mumbai and Jakarta. Also, Jakarta is very uh, Indonesian uh, focused because of the massive uh, amount of population. Uh, Rashid is asking about Zurich. Zurich is doing relatively well. It's number, if I'm not mistaken, 50 something. So it's a good ecosystem. Uh, definitely in places like, in things like Ethereum, blockchain and so on, it's a great ecosystem. It's a, it's a good one. It's definitely a good one. Uh, but not not yet part uh, part of the top ones in uh, in Europe. Let me actually have a quick look. Yeah, they're almost there. They're almost together with Madrid. There, but they will be about fifty something. So Zurich is a good uh, is a good option, especially if you do blockchain and other 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 things as well. But they they've still not managed to create that much success. Africa and Middle East, Africa is still not making it big. We have one ecosystem in the top 10, which is Tel Aviv, the startup nation. A lot of amazing things have happened there. Uh, the one that has actually uh, grown the fastest recently in the, in the recent year is Dubai. So what's been happening in Dubai is absolutely amazing. Uh, it became the incorporation center of the Middle East and they're doing absolutely great. Uh, Jerusalem has a, has a, a, a 14 billion dollar uh, startup uh, mobile line so they have nice successes but very big app from Tel Aviv the one ecosystem that has been growing recently very very fast and the only African ecosystem in the top 100 is actually Lagos once again because of massive population I have to tell you this if your country has massive population you're going to have a city ranked very very high there is nothing around it just because the market size is so big and governments are very pro-local startups, so they will not let Uber take over. They will tell Kareem to take over and so on. Um, also, we see very good news from, from uh, Cape Town, Nairobi, Riyadh, Johannesburg, and uh, Haifa is doing well as well. Uh, once again, this is just an example of a slide. We also do uh, rankings per, per industry. And a reminder for you that your industry is very important. So don't only look at the global rankings. For example, if you're doing hardware and IoT, uh, Shenzhen is a great place to be in, it's sort of like the Silicon Valley of the world in hardware. Uh, you can see over here that uh, New York would be ranked much lower in hardware and IoT uh, because they're basically a fintech center. So if you're having a, a, a hardware and IoT startup, maybe New York is not a place to go to. It's super expensive and not that good. Uh, Tokyo would be a great option. Uh, also Taipei and Tel Aviv. So those, those are a few examples of, uh, of how the results are changing as your vertical is changing and you have to take this into account. So uh, a few things that uh, can help you make a decision about where to move. Of course, startuplink.com, a ranking of all the 1,000 cities. Nomad list is nice if you're more of a lifestyle uh, entrepreneur and you're into lifestyle design and you are interested in, in cool places to be. And Expatistan is also great for a uh, cost of living uh, analysis. So that's a little bit about that. It's important to say, it's very difficult to relocate. There are many, many challenges. There are cultural challenges, language challenges. You want to pick a place where you speak the language as well. Quality of life, the cost of living, um, maybe even racism. At, at some point, uh, some people don't like foreigners that much. Uh, by the way, that's what's great about San Francisco. You go to San Francisco or even to the US, nobody asks you where you're from. They're always going to ask you, what are you working on? And that's something that is really amazing. In Europe, it would be a little bit different. They will always ask you a little bit or wonder where are you from. In the US, because it's a country of immigrants, nobody cares. They just care if you're rich or not, in a way, or if you're successful or not. That's something that is really cool about the US. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. You, you want to make sure that you go to a place where business is easy to do, that you can register a company very easily, that you can close a company easily. Uh, that you can fire people, just like we said, very, very important, fire, uh, the ability to fire people without without uh, getting married to them, uh, everything. So there are many, many things to take into account. And, uh, and of course, also take into account grants and is there government support and can you actually uh, have software lending and do you have friends there and so on and so on. So there are many, many aspects. Uh, one of the things we always say is that if you're not ready, yet and you have to stay in your ecosystem then uh, if you can't leave it leave it which means do not stay as a passive actor 
in an ecosystem that is underperforming. If you're stuck in a bad ecosystem, you want to become a leader in the ecosystem. You help, want to help it grow. If it grows, you grow. And of course, you get bonus points of being the connector and have the, have the growth of your ecosystem under your name. Uh, of course, our governments are supposed to do most of the work. And if you're in a place that the government simply doesn't get it, or is even anti-startups, go away. Like there's nothing you can do, but uh, governments are slow sometimes. You can't really expect them to do everything. So uh, how do you do it? When, when you're actually working on your startup and you don't have time, you can start a meetup group for entrepreneurs, a networking event, a WhatsApp group for people that are interested, offer to mentor a few startups and so on. It makes massive impact. And your ecosystem will thank you for it. You'll be in the a legend in a way if you do that so that's uh, that's also that's always great we talked a little bit about the main uh, case studies those are the cities that we really like once again silicon valley if you want to make it super big silicon valley is the place uh, singapore especially if you're aiming for the asian market this is the place to go and also amazing government support uh, I, I don't think i've ever seen a smarter government in terms of ecosystem development than singapore they simply get it, they're extremely ambitious, and therefore they're also successful. So that's a, that's a great, uh, great uh, ecosystem. Tokyo is a little bit expensive. If you want to go to Japan, you might want to consider other cities. Fukuoka uh, is one of my favorites, without a doubt. A, a low cost of living, super, super friendly government that want people to succeed and to move to Fukuoka. Great startup visa for uh, entrepreneurs, a lot of support, uh, also a beautiful city. Uh, one of the cities that we also like a lot in Latin America is Bogota. I think the Colombian entrepreneurs are probably the best entrepreneurs in South America from what I've seen until now. And uh, uh, really high government support. Uh, they simply get it. They're very, very pro-business, uh, also low cost of living. Uh, if you're looking for something in Canada, Markham, which is part of the Toronto region, is also an amazing place with a little bit less cost of living and a great cluster of technological hub. And they're very, very welcoming to foreigners as well. Canadians are, Markham is especially uh, one of them. And once again, you're, it's in, in the vicinity of Toronto, the best ecosystem in, uh, in Canada. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's see if we have any questions and if not, we can, uh, we can close this. Um, so yeah. See, so uh, Chris is asking about China and if Chinese startups are not basically a copycat of uh, Western ideas. Yes, absolutely, yes, they are, but they are a copycat of Western ideas when they have a population of more than 1 billion people and where regulation does not allow Western startups to penetrate. So basically that's why uh, uh, they have a lot of output, not necessarily because they have a lot of innovation, I will tell you that it's very hard to have innovation when you don't have a free, totally free society. There is something in the freedom and, and more than anything in the ability to become a hero that, uh, that really inspires people to innovate. And in China, you don't have it because uh, you can't be an Elon Musk or a Jeff Bezos uh, or Bill Gates in China. Uh, when you are, you get into trouble. So in a way, uh, it's not so fun to... Uh, yet, and by the way, the Chinese government is now changing it and they're becoming a lot more friendly to startups because after what they've done with, in the case of Jack Ma and Didi and so on, uh, they understood that uh, by clamping down on entrepreneurs, on successful entrepreneurs, because look, when you build a startup, you have less than 5% chance of success. And if you have less than 5% chance of success and you're super successful and you get into trouble like Jack Ma did, why become an entrepreneur? It's total insanity. So, uh, so yeah, but, but China has a lot of a lot of money, amazing market, but you can't be a superstar in China. And most of the entrepreneurs, the really ambitious ones, they want to become superstars, sending missiles to space and so on. Probably not going to happen uh, in China. Uh, Rwanda is a very interesting ecosystem. They had very interesting regulation. Like for example, if you wanted to do something with drones. Uh, Nobody would let you do it all over the world. Rwanda would let you do it. They have very interesting policies. Unfortunately, they don't have a big enough market uh, share or basically big enough population. Uh, so the other systems like Lagos and uh, in Nigeria, Cairo and so on became much bigger and all the money is going there. 
So Rwanda did not manage to innovate globally yet. And because they have a very uh, small amount of population, it wasn't enough to, to make it big. And uh, we've seen them struggling in the last few years. So uh, that's uh, a little bit of that. Uh, Theodor is asking about Japan, and yeah, the, Japan is a very interesting case study. They have so much potential. They have a little bit of difficulty with English, and they're trying to close gaps now because I have to tell you, English is one of the most, like we, we've seen actually that the most successful startup countries are either English speakers, US, UK, uh, and so on, Ireland, Australia, or uh, places where you have really high knowledge of English, like Israel, Sweden, Netherlands, and so on. Uh, so Japan has an issue with that, and it's definitely something that they have to work on. Uh, and definitely there is much, a lot of risk averseness in Asia in general, meaning that if you're doing something and you fail, uh, you're basically deleted. Your reputation is damaged. And considering that you have 90% chances of failure, it really creates a lot of challenges for, the, for, for entrepreneurship in Asia. And that's something that has to change on the mindset. And until it changes, there's going to be a problem. Chris is asking about Colombia rather than Chile. Chile was a very early, uh, probably the first one in Latin America that understood that startups are a thing. They have the most inspiring, one of the best programs ever created, which is Startup Chile. But something happened there. I don't know what exactly has happened there, but it's simply slow and slow. Um, so the top entrepreneurs in uh, Latin America are either from Brazil, Argentina, and Colombia. Colombia has Rappi, for example, the biggest e-commerce platform. Uh, Argentina has Mercado Libre, which is also big. Uh, uh, Brazil has New Bank, which was actually a massive fintech startup, the biggest startup in Brazil, started by a Colombian. So what happened in Chile? I'm not sure. Maybe something in the mindset. Uh, I have no idea, but but something there did not work out. Although they had the fastest start, it didn't, didn't happen. The, didn't happen yet, and the, and that's great. Satoshi is giving their their impression about Rwanda, and definitely I agree. They're very easy and open to register a company, but difficult to grow. And again, no investors, and it's a little bit uh, a little bit of a problem. So uh, the African ecosystem, by the way, are the future. Uh, hiring in Africa is a very good move, by the way, especially in English-speaking countries. That's where most of the talent is going to come from, but uh, not easy uh, to start uh, from scratch. Nicola is asking about Italy or Spain. Italy, slow, very, very slow ecosystem, unfortunately. Uh, the government is starting to wake up 30 years too late. I hope it's not too late. Spain, you have two great ecosystems, Barcelona and Madrid. Spain is a great ecosystem. They're actually a great country. They have some, some political issues and the economy is not as pro-business as you would want it to be. If it would be, it would be much better, but uh, they're doing really well, even though uh, even though they have those bu this bureaucracy and stuff like that, but uh, still Spain is a great startup ecosystem. Boom. Uh, so yeah, we talked a little bit about uh, about Starbucks as well. I hope it, it kind of makes you think about the topic and kind of learn, learn about it. If you need anything, I'm going to send you over here my email, elitestartuplink.com. Once again, encourage everyone to think a lot about where you are. Are you in the right place or not? That's one of the questions, once again, that we do not ask ourselves enough. And that's pretty much it. Thank you all for arriving. It's been a pleasure and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.